It's me again. I'm <laughs> back again. Um, two great books, especially if you're really into the history of things. The first one is The Oxford History of Britain. Now, this, this covers more than just medieval times. It actually goes back to uh, prehistory, ancient history, uh, medieval, renaissance, and then up right to modern times. Um, but a great book, especially for the prehistory and the ancient history of Britain. Really fascinating stuff. And then uh, another book, um, again, Oxford Press, uh, Illustrated History of Medieval Europe. This book has not only just a very great text, well-researched too, uh, but it has awesome artwork in it. Um, color, black and white, maps, drawings, pictures. Uh, here's an example. For, I think this is 8th century, the Book of Kells, one of the oldest books in existence from uh, medieval uh, Europe. Uh, great artwork in this book. So this is another handy reference. In fact, these are good books to keep when you're reading the fiction books because you can refer back to certain things and learn a lot. Now, um, another book about Eleanor of, uh, I won't say the name because I don't know how to say it, Queen Eleanor. Um, this is fascinating because back in this time of history, women did not have power. This was extremely, at least in the sense of political power. Um, in, in the family unit there, yes. But in political power, she is a real pioneer and very interesting to read about her. Now, I've got some other books that are more just check, general background. You might want to check out an Encyclopedia of Celtic Wisdom. Again, not necessarily a medieval book, but uh, a lot of what they believed and practiced and did in medieval times is based on the Celtic tradition still. And then uh, also another one, the English, or the Norton Anthology of English Literature of the Middle Ages. There's some funny stuff in here. You'd be surprised how advanced some of these folks were. It, 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 uh, it will entertain you. Okay, the last few books I'm going to talk about don't neatly fit into any of the previous categories. The first one is a pure reference book. The Mammoth Book of British Kings and Queens. It's over 800 pages. There's a lot in here. You think, well, there can't be that many kings and queens. You would be surprised. Um, there's, this is a valuable book to have if you're reading any of the other stuff because you can refer back to this and learn lots of things. Very important information in this book. And then these are two like kind of fantasy things that um, they're light reading. Uh, they give you some flavor and feel of the of the of the Middle Ages of medieval times, but they're not they're not based on anything real except a, a flavor and feeling. Excalibur, we all know about Excalibur, and the Mists of Avalon. This is also uh, I think one of the cable networks made a TV series out of it. But it gives you a little bit of flavor and feel, um, but it's not, they're not historical in any, any real sense. Okay, that's it for the books. Maybe next time we'll do some music or some artwork or something else. Uh, I'm not a medieval scholar. Don't pretend to be. It's just a hobby of mine. It's something I, I, I love doing. Someday I hope to go to Europe and uh, visit a lot of these places in person. But until then, I will read about them. So, and... Next week, I'll be posting some videotape from the uh, Hogtown Medieval Festival. This is cool stuff. There's knights in armor, there's jousting, there's musicians, performers, dancers, food, uh, theatrical, there's vendors. This is, I've been to a lot of different medieval and renaissance festivals. This is my favorite one, and I think uh, you'll enjoy the video from next week. See you then.